Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Previously, I reviewed the Sovel SV06, which is a Prusa clone with pretty good quality. Today, I will review the pumped up version, otherwise known as the SV06 Plus. This is a mid-sized printer packed with almost all of the features you would expect from a mid-range machine. Let's take a quick look at the features. It comes with a 300 by 300 by 340 print volume, and the motion system uses linear rods on the X, Y, and dual Z axes. There are no leveling knobs underneath the bed, and it uses an inductive sensor for auto bed leveling. It also uses an all-metal planetary direct extruder, a PI print surface, a 32-bit board, and silent stepper drivers. When you take a closer look at this machine, you can see that it's not just a pumped up version of the SV06. There have actually been a lot of other new upgrades. Let's take a look at the differences between the two machines. Other than a larger print volume, the Plus version features a touch screen, while the SV06 comes with an LCD screen. Additionally, the Plus version has an isolated heated bed and a 450 watt PSU compared to the 300 watt one on the SV06. It also has a filament sensor and a spinnable spool holder which provides smoother filament feeding. The heater block has been changed to a volcano style one and there is also a volcano style thread MK8 nozzle, and I will talk more about this later. Since the Z-axis lead screws are longer, two bearings have been added to secure them at the top. The linear rods have also been upgraded from 8mm to 10mm on the X, Y, and Z axis, making the printer more sturdy. The cable loom of the heated bed cable has also been changed from a rubber tube to a more standard version seen in most other 3D printers. This covers all the differences that I can see so far between the two machines. I would like to thank Sovo for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. Putting this printer together is easy. This should take less than 10 minutes. After the assembly is done, the first thing we want to do is synchronize the Z axes. I will start by entering the leveling menu, and the printer will home itself. After that, select Auto Z Align, and it will move all the way to the top, and let the gantry level itself by bumping into the block at the top. It will then do another round of auto homing and move down. We can now set the Z offset. After that, let it do a round of auto bed leveling, and we can heat up the printer and insert some filament. To set up this machine in Cura, I will just use the SV06 profile, change the name to SV06+, Plus, set the print volume to 300 by 300 by 340 and set the default retraction distance to 0.5mm and the speed to 40mm per second. This is one of the shortest retraction distances that I have ever tested, but let's just start with a 3D Benchy and see how it works. The estimated print time is 1 hour and 30 minutes. The print finished in 1 hour and 29 minutes, which is in line with the estimated time in Cura. The print quality is very nice, with basically no stringing even with just a 0.5mm retraction distance. The surface is clean, the cooling is good, and the overhanging and bridging all looks good. The bottom sticks well to the PEI sheet, and the layers are also clean. I don't have any complaints about this Benchy. As this printer claims to print at 150 milliliters per second and it runs standard Marlin, I'm not sure about that, but I will just do a simple test. I will increase the maximum acceleration of the touchscreen from the stock 500 milliliters per second squared to 1500 and set the print speed to 500% of the original speed to completely max it out and see how it looks and how long it will take. With the print speed increased, everything looks faster, including the first layer, bottom layers, and infill. I will let it finish, and then we will see the result.
it ended up taking one hour and three minutes for a one hour benchy. It doesn't look too bad. As this printer is only using Marlin firmware without input shaping, the surface has quite a lot of ringing when printing at higher speeds, but the extruder, hot end, and part cooling fan can keep up with the speed, so there are no extrusion or cooling issues. The major difference between a normal speed benchy and this one is just the ringing on the surface. I would say the speed of this one hour printing time is more like 100 to 120 millimeters per second. It's not bad, and it's actually better than some so-called 250 millimeters per second bed slingers that I have previously tested. Next, I will print a model of a Jeep with Voxel PLA Pro. This PLA Pro is more stiff than regular PLA, but it requires more retraction to avoid stringing. I think the default 0.5mm retraction may not be enough, so I will change it to 1mm. The result is not too bad, but there is a tiny bit of stringing and some missing spots on the wheels. I think I need more time to fine tune the retraction settings on this filament. Overall, the print looks alright and the wheels can move freely. After that, I will switch back to Airy one PLA and print a pen holder. This model requires a lot of retraction, so I will use the default 0.5mm retraction setting and see if this can avoid stringing. The result is awesome with almost no stringing and the entire pen holder as well as the bottom is looking good. Next, I will print an infinite cube to test clearance and all of the hinges should be able to move freely. The result is okay, with all of the hinges moving smoothly. As this is not a super tough print, most printers can handle this cube without too many issues, though some may not be as smooth. I would say that this result is better than average. Then, I will try printing a harder print, a Harry Potter wand that comes in pieces and that should be able to extend and collapse when you swing it. It ended up working okay, but the front of the wand cannot extend all the way out. However, you can still play with it. After that, I will print an ABS crate. Printing ABS with an open frame printer without an enclosure can be challenging, especially since my garage temperature is just around 17 degrees Celsius at night. I will apply some Elmer's Craft Bond extra strength glue to the bed, but the corners still warp due to the cold ambient temperature. Additionally, the layers also cracked a bit. When printing ABS, an open frame printer just can't compare to a fully enclosed printer. My original plan was to switch to a larger diameter nozzle to print something big, and use a 1.2mm nozzle to print a trash can at a 1mm layer height, which would take just 4 hours and 13 minutes. 
As this hotten is using a volcano style heated block, the threads and length are the exact same as a volcano nozzle, so it should be compatible. Unfortunately, after I screwed the volcano nozzle in, I found that it was shorter than the cooling fan duct, which means it will scratch the print bed before the nozzle. Also, the silicone sock will not fit since the volcano nozzle is shorter. So, I just switched back to the stock nozzle to print a regular size one with PETG. It finished without issues and the layers look good, but since this extruder and heated block are both so good, I should be able to push them harder if they didn't use such a weird nozzle. Next, I will print some TPU. I will print a card wallet using vase mode, which means it will just print the bottom and one wall. Since the extruder is strong, it won't be a problem to print something so thin with TPU. The wallet is super soft and I can fit about 20 cards inside. Finally, I would like to print some engineering grade materials. Since the printer only comes with two brass nozzles and I couldn't find hardened steel nozzles for this printer, I will print with polycarbonate instead of nylon carbon fiber. I will make an adapter plate for the SV05 since I want to put a Creality Spread Extruder Pro on it. Polycarbonate requires 280 to 300 degrees Celsius and is a non-abrasive filament that can be printed with a regular brass nozzle. The brackets stuck well to the glue without any issues. While the top surface is not as smooth, it is fully functional, and I have successfully transformed this from an SV05 to a sort of Ender 5S1. Okay. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. The new planetary extruder works very well, and with the larger volcano-style heated block, it works even better than it did on the SV06. This combination can melt filament really quickly. 2. The motion system has also been upgraded from having 8mm linear rods to having 10mm rods on all axes. So, when I manually boost the speed and acceleration to print an hour-long Benchy, the result is not bad, especially considering that the machine only runs Marlin firmware without input shaper. 3. The Z-Align feature works well on this new firmware, just like the Prusa i3 machine. It moves all the way up to synchronize the dual Z axis, and I no longer have the inconsistency issue that I experienced with the SV06's original firmware when working with auto bed leveling. This feature, as well as the auto bed leveling, works great on the SV06+. Plus. 4. The UI of the color touch screen is also well designed in terms of features and menu structure. The dark theme is now the default theme, and although they still have a light theme that I personally don't really like, it is now just an extra option for someone who may prefer it. 5. The machine has a 450 watt power supply, which is better than most budget mid-sized printers with 350 or 360 watt power supplies. It can heat everything up within a reasonable time frame. Now for the cons. 1. The nozzle. As this printer uses a volcano style heated block, why not use their standard version including the volcano nozzle? Making this volcano thread and length with an MK8 head is strange, as this means I can't use my existing volcano style nozzles with larger diameters or those hardened steel nozzles that can print nylon carbon fiber and other abrasive filament. Even though the major selling point of this printer is its all metal hot end with a 300 degrees Celsius printing temperature, it didn't come with a hardened steel nozzle or larger diameter nozzles. The worst part is that you can't find them anywhere, even on Sovel's website. I can't see any benefits that come from using these nozzles over the standard Volcano ones. So, it's my suggestion to Sovel to redesign the fan duct, have an SDL file available for downloading and printing, and make it compatible with the standard Volcano nozzle, which is cheap and easy to buy. 2. The micro SD card. As Sovel is no longer using Creality's motherboard and has their own design, I don't think they should keep using the micro SD card slot and should instead use a USB Type-A connector for USB drives or at least use a full-size SD card. The micro SD card itself is not good, especially as the slot is located at the electronic enclosure at the back of the printer, making it super inconvenient to use. In my opinion, unless it's for a mobile device like a Quick Pro camera that has to limit the physical size of the storage media, for something so big like a 3D printer, a micro SD card should no longer be used. 
Other than that, I don't have any complaints about this machine. However, I do have another suggestion for Silvo regarding their claim about the machine's 150mm per second print speed. After increasing the acceleration to 1,500mm per second squared and increasing the print speed to 500%, I was able to print a 1-hour Benchy at around 100 to 120 milliliters per second with the reasonable results. To further boost the speed to 150 milliliters per second and above, Silvo can make the Clipper firmware and printer.cfg config file available for downloading. This would enable the use of a Sonic Pad, Speeder Pad, or a Big Tree Tech CV1 board to run Clipper. Given this printer's great motion system, strong extruder, high flow hot end, and good cooling, printing quickly with Clipper should be a breeze. In conclusion, the Silva SV06 Plus offers an incredible value for a price of just $350. I would even go so far as to say that it's one of the best budget mid-sized printers currently in the market. We recently added a new page on our website, auroratechchannel.com, where we list our favorite machines of all time. For now, we'll just be starting with 3D printers. Instead of recommending every machine that we review, we will only recommend the best in every category. Currently, the title of the best budget mid-size printer is held by the Elegoo Neptune Plus, but I may consider replacing it with the SV06 Plus if Sovil can create a new fan.stl file and a silicon stock that allows for the use of regular Volcano nozzles. Our list will likely be regularly updated as we review new machines weekly. If you're interested in the SV06 Plus, I included a link to it in the video description. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video useful, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. I can't s After increasing the acceleration to 100... The nozzle. As this... Okay, let's... Ugh.